Bibles, you're online. Are you with us? At Hebrews chapter 12. Go there. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you where. Hebrews chapter 12. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12. Let's look at um, verse 2. You get it? Shout amen. amen. Looking on to who? Jesus. Jesus. Now, who is Jesus? Author and finish of our faith. Who for the joy? There's some reasons why Jesus did what he did. Who for the joy? That was what? Said before him. What did he do? Endured the cross. What else? Despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Father, give you thanks and praise and cause you, pray you cause increases we're touched by this truth and that we reach for heights unknown. Amen and amen. Take your seats in the presence of Almighty God. Uh, this month, you know, each month we have an emphasis. If you go through your GCT calendars, how many have your calendars? Keep your calendars. Where have I go? I was passing out calendars at the game last night. Take the calendars with you because uh, there's much information there, and it's just a good thing to have. But in there, we have the emphasis of each month. Last month was purpose. Remember that? January was purpose. This month is what? Destiny. Destiny. That's right. February is destiny. And it's so important for us to really get some understanding of what destiny is and what destiny uh, is about as it relates to our lives and our walk in Christ. Amen? Somebody shout destiny. destiny. Destiny is God's desired place for you. Say that God's God. desired, desired place for you. It is God's finishing for you. You understand? God has an ultimate place that he wants each of us to end up. I want to talk today about the beginnings of your finish. Say that, the beginnings of your finish. I know that's a little odd, a little strange, but that's the way it came to me because, Jeff, it talks much about in our lesson today about how we're to walk towards a finish. You can't discredit the beginning. The Bible says, despise not the day of small things. Uh -huh. Look at somebody and say, everything has a beginning. But when you don't understand the beginnings of things, you'll never get to the ultimate finish that God really has for you. So you have to respect and have uh, a sense of uh, honor and integrity when it comes to little things. Yes, yes, yes. The Bible says that if you're faithful over few things, God says, I'll make you ruler over much. <clears throat> that means if you're faithful over a few. Then God says, I'm going to let you run a whole lot. Faithful over few, but I'll make you ruler over much. See, when you can learn how to be faithful with someone else's, then God will give you your own. Can I get a witness in here? And so we have to learn how to respect God. The beginnings, the small things, yes, yes. If you got a one-room apartment, clean it up. Don't be asking God for a mansion and you won't make up one bed. Say amen. <laughs> why, why you want a whole kitchen when you won't watch a cup, right? So you got to know how to handle little stuff. And when you can have a respect for the little that he does, Hear you complaining about the little job that you have when somebody has no job. Little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. So, so destiny is God's final place, his ultimate discern and desire for us. So we have to focus then on the finish. Notice what Paul says. He says, looking unto Jesus. And look what he calls Jesus, the author and the finisher. Faith allows me to think like God, to see like God. How does God see? He sees things 
all the way through. Not just the beginning of it, but he knows your end. Say that God knows my end. He's the author and the finisher. That's why I trust him. Because God, unlike us, God knows everything. Somebody say, God knows everything. Come on, say it again. God knows everything. If you're the author and the finisher, you got to know everything. And that's why I don't have to know everything as long as God knows everything. Because he's ordering my steps. He'll give me warnings about what I need to do and when I need to do it. Oh, yeah, so everything is too much for me to know. I just need to know what God's going to do, Angela, day by day. What's that song y'all sing? One day at a time. Don't just sing it. Do it. Trust God every day. Don't be worried about tomorrow when it hadn't even gotten here yet. You don't know if you're going to have tomorrow. You better make the best of this day that you have right now. Shout amen, somebody. So we walk faithfully and thankfully through the beginnings on our way to our finish. Jesus, the author and finisher. He knows the finish, final facts of my faith. Say that, Jesus knows the finished, final facts of my faith. He knows everything there is to know about me. That's why most times in our prayers, we talk too much. Uh, the best prayer you can pray is simply this, Lord, you know. Now, that's going to have you a prayer meeting in the last two seconds. Lord, you know. Especially when you're praying around nosy folks. Some people just li listen to your prayers to find out your business. Will you lead us in prayer today? Okay, bow your heads. Lord, you know. Amen. Because he already knows what I have need of. Watch this. Before I even ask him. You think you got to explain something to God. Are you crazy? God, I want you to do this for me, but, but I need you to do it on Wednesday, Lord. You do it on Wednesday. I, I, there's a car I want, and it's at 657 uh, Perkins Street. God is on the left hand side. God knows where the car is. You're not talking to somebody that doesn't know. He knows what you don't know. That that ain't the car you're going to get. It's the other one on the home floor, showroom floor. Amen, somebody. See, God got something better in mind for you. Tell your neighbor he's got something better in mind for you. Yes, he does. He's got something better in mind for you. I remember when my wife... And I moved back to Memphis. We were looking for our first home in Memphis. And I, I got so tired of looking for a house. And so I just said, we're getting this one. It's got a big enough bathroom in it. We're getting this house. And she didn't care much for the house. And so she said, okay, okay. I said, we're getting this house. And I was getting ready to put the contract down. And she went around, kept driving around and called me. She said, I found something else. I said, girl, I told you I'm sick of looking for a house. And I went out there and saw she found something bigger, better, for less. Say amen, somebody. And it had the address of my birthday, so I knew it was God. It was night of my year of birth. 1958 was the address, Mount Baton at that time, back over there in Cordova where it was. I said, yeah, God, this must be you. So God knows what he has for you even when you think you know what you want. Uh-huh, say he already knows. Say it again, he already knows. Right, only God knows, watch this, what is. Why is that? Because he determines is. He knows what is because he determines is. And don't give prophets and preachers and evangelists and missionaries and other folk too much credit. Yeah, we're just making people, you know, crazy today. We're giving prophets and preachers and stuff too much credit. God is the only one that knows everything. Come on, talk to me. And you find somebody, you tell me a prophet or preacher, somebody that knows everything about you, and I'll show you somebody stalking you. God is the only someone that knows everything. The Bible says, as it relates to prophets and preachers and others, that we know in part. Look at somebody and say, you only know so much. God will show you a little bit. He ain't going to show you everybody's, all of everybody's business. Because you can't handle that much truth. Come on, talk to me, y'all. Say amen, somebody. But God is the one that knows how many things? Everything. God knows what is. Why? Because he determines is. He knows when he's going to bless you and how he's going to bless you and who he's going to bless you through. God already knows those things. 
What we're to do in life is not just to reach for levels, but to reach for realms. Realms have to do with things that God provides. See, levels have to do with people, places, and things, places, and positions. Levels are determined by men. Amen. But the realm is determined by God. God can do something for you, and man be trying to figure out how you got there. They said, I thought you was on level one. And how you get to level 10? Because God let me skip some stuff. You don't hear me talking to you. God will flip it for you. Nuts about it. Tell him he can turn it around. That's why you don't be weary in well-doing. For in due season, you'll reap if you faint not. What does that mean? Don't lose heart. Tell somebody, don't lose heart. You got to remain focused on the better that God has for you. Don't lose hearts. Quit throwing in the towel. Stop quitting every time a little trouble breaks out. Don't you know God is still able? I need you to nudge three people and say he's still able. What can he do, y'all? He can flip the script. He can turn it around. And sometimes, because we don't understand that though man gives you a turn, God gives you time. Come on, tell somebody, man gives you a turn. But God gives you time. Man says, come on up, it's your turn, it's your turn. No, but God gives you the time to do whatever it is that he wants you to do. So what man makes you vice president? God got to wake you up. Did you hear what I just said to you? Yeah, man can make you vice president. Man can give you the newest position over everybody else. Man can give it to his relative, but God's got to wake him up. Because he controls time. And another part of that is that we're not to be jealous over realms and jealous over places and stuff like that because God is the one that sets us up for the best thing. Say, God sets us up. Let me have about five brothers. Come up here right quick. Right, five brothers. About five. Stand up here right quick. I'm going to show you how God, how God sets things. Come on, about five brothers. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There you go. Come on, come on. There you go. Thank you. Come on, Deke, you stand. Thank you. That, that, that. Line up for me right here. Line up, line up for me and face me. Line up for me. That's right, line up for me. Come on up a little further, so that's good. Line up for me. Yeah, line up for me. Isn't that something? Look at it. Yeah, they're in line. I put them in line. I did that. <clears throat> I put them in line. Now, you know, you can't get jealous. Deke, Deke I know you, you're probably about the oldest one up here, aren't you? And they got you at the end of the line. That's what I'm talking to you. <laughs> you can't get upset, Deke, because they got you at the end of the line, right? So don't be back there talking about him. Because that's right, Deke said, yes, Lord. Because you're at the end of the line. Because God is controlling time. Watch God say, turn around. All of a sudden, he in the front. Lord, have mercy in here. I need you to go tell three people, God can turn your situation around. While you complaining about what's going on and what ain't happening. I need you to tell three people, God can turn it around. Well, let me get about 800 folks to get up and turn around. Come on, get up and turn around. Get up and turn around. You ain't moved all day. Get up and turn around. Those of you watching online, get off that couch and get up and turn around. That's right. So watch, so watch. Don't seek destinations. Seek destiny. Say that. Don't seek destinations. Seek destiny. That's right. That's right. I remember when... Um, uh, after high school, I started preaching in my 12th grade year of high school, and uh, my whole high school come out for my first sermon. But uh, later, I was invited back to school. I was invited back to my middle school or junior high, we called it then, and then I was also invited back to my high school to speak to, to some of the classes. And my subject was, life is a journey, not a destination. Because so many people look at life as to that they finally made it. No, every step you take is for the next step. Every experience you have, God is only preparing you for the next experience. Whatever you're going through now, you'll use it for tomorrow. Are you hearing me? Life is a journey, and most young people miss that because they're eager to get out of high school only to get ready to go back to school. Understand something. You're not getting out of high school like there's no more school. I'm going to stop learning forever. No, no. Now, that's why you are to be very conscious of what you're taking in school, what you're learning, even for those of you in college. Be very, be very careful and conscious of what subjects you're taking because of where you want to go from there. You don't just want to graduate and then it's over. No, everything now I have gained, I must apply for the next venture. 
for the next challenge. Everything that happens in your life ought to some kind of way make its way into your learning, your understanding that you gain something from it. Help me shout, learn from it. Say it again, learn from it. So a destination is a place. But destiny is the progressive promise of Almighty God, right? And the best way to respect your past is to build on it for the future. Say that. The best way to respect my past is to build on it for the future. You know, what has happened has happened, right? You and Bubba ain't together no more. That's, that's over. Learn from it. Don't get another Bubba. Right? Amen. You and Susan, something happened, I don't know what happened. But, but uh, learn from it, right? Don't get mad and want to run over Susie in the car when you see her across the street. No, 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 no. Learn from that. Say amen, somebody. Whatever has been your dilemma, your challenge, your issue, amen, whatever has been that, that has come into your life in the way of experience, learn from it. Grow from it, right? Because it's a part of the beginnings of your finish. Shout yes in this place, right? So we live in a time of transition. Say, I'm in motion. Say it again, I'm in motion. That's right, and so that's what we learn, how to be in motion and to realize what God is doing and how to see what's happening in our lives. There's something God himself is making to happen for us in our lives. There's something I, uh, years ago, I, uh, I had this analogy that came to me as it relates to 3D, how you see things, 3D, yeah. And I got this unction uh, when I was at, um, I guess it was called, um, uh, what is that thing, at, at Disney World, not Disney World, it's, it's in o o Orlando, Universal Studios. I took my boys, my wife and I, they were very young, uh, to ride this ride called Spider-Man. And they said, well, you got to put on these 3D glasses. I didn't want to do it. I just took them and put them in my pocket and my boys were just jumping around. And, ah! I say, really, this is not that interested. And they said, Daddy, you got to put the glasses on. And so I put the glasses on, and man, Spider-Man jumped in that car. I said, what in the world? I took the glasses off, and he disappeared. I put the glasses back on, Spider-Man swung right by me. Because those glasses allow you to see what you didn't see before. Oh, Lord, that's why some of y'all didn't wave your hand. When I said that, you should have done this. Woo! Because you can't see them. That's what your problem is. Amen. You got to be able to see what you haven't seen, Lord Jesus. Tell your neighbor, you've been missing some stuff. Tell your neighbor. Tell them God's been working right around you. There are angels all throughout this room. You just can't see what's happening. God is right now making a way out of nowhere. Good God Almighty. God just sent some angels to fix some stuff that's going wrong at your house. and You don't even know it, but somebody, God's putting some gas in your car right Oh, Lord Jesus. Look at somebody and say there's something in the atmosphere going on right now. But you got to be conscious in your faith. Now some things you'll never see through your physical eyes. You got to see them in faith. Say faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. Because our sight is limited. Say amen somebody. I mean, thank God for these little glasses I got on. If I take these glasses off, all y'all look like relatives. <laughs> Amen, somebody. But when, when you understand faith in God, God will reveal some things to you you never saw before. 3D, divinely determined destiny. Divinely determined destiny. You've got to understand the finish that God has for you. See, he's the author and the finisher. So what faith allows me to do is to see like God and to think like God. God will show you the finish of a thing before he even tells you to start it. That's right, right? Here in church or at home, wherever you're cap capturing visions and so on, understand that God's showing you what he's already done. But now he wants you to walk through the process to obtain what he has for you. Shout amen, somebody. And even though we have trouble and sometimes the enemy wants you to, to, to be misled because of the difficulties you're having. Yeah, there are people on your job that don't want you to win. They're talking about you. They're digging ditches for you. You know you can't stop folk from lying on you. Can I get a witness? Stop chasing every lie that people tell on you. You'll waste your days. Amen. Matter of fact, you're going to spread the rumor even further trying to tell. Did you hear what they've been saying about me? No, I ain't heard what they say. 
Now you got six more people know what they said about you. You just have to go on in life. The Bible says when men say all manner of evil against you, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Why? Because great is your reward, Lord have mercy, in heaven. Oh, God was giving me a word the other day in my time of meditation, and, and he was simply telling me that the devil is setting me up for my best. Amen. Because Satan don't even understand what he's doing. When he's putting you down, God is raising you up. Are you hearing me talk to you? See, the world will make you think when people put you down that it is an indictment. But let me tell you what God told me. He says it's not an indictment, it's an induction. Oh, you missed it. I, I used to be slow too. I said it's not an indictment, it's an induction. In other words, now you are a member of the club. The scripture says, for so persecuted they the prophets that were before you. Oh, Jesus. If they talked about Jesus. What makes you think they're not going to talk about you? Look at somebody and say, let them talk about you. Just keep your heart right. Come on, tell them, let them talk about you. Just keep on rejoicing in what God is about to do in your life. Look at somebody and say, God knows how to fix that situation. Divinely determined destiny. So God says, he sees the, be the beginning, but he also sees the end. And he'll show you, oh my God, the end of it. How many of you have already seen some blessings that you hadn't even gotten yet? Anybody here see a new house? Where are you? Where are you? Do you see yourself being debt free? Where are you? Where are you? Anybody see that beginnings of your finish? Do you see yourself, amen, with a new car? Anybody see yourself? How many of y'all, I see myself in this way. How many see yourself losing weight? Lord Jesus, man, I saw myself the other day, man, I look like Hercules almost. <laughs> and then I woke up. But listen, let me tell you something. You got to know how. <laughs> you got to know how to see. <laughs> Don't be laughing at me like I ain't going to do it. Check me out in 30 days. That's when I'm going to start. Amen. What I'm telling you is that you got to be able to see <laughs> what God is up to. How about somebody say God is up to something? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Now, he's already, matter of fact, whatever he's up to, here it is, he's already done it. Whatever it is that you want God to do, I got to tell you something, he's really already done it. See, what God will do, I told you before, he'll show you in faith. He'll show you in faith the finish. But then he'll tell you back up and start it. Why? Because your footsteps are ordered. But if you follow the orders, you're going to end up where he told you to go. But he shows you the end of a thing so you don't lose heart. Say, don't lose heart. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you will what? Reap if you what? Faint not. The word that faint not means don't lose heart. Don't lose attitude. Elder Runny, Elder Runny came by the house the other morning, and uh, you know, he's uh, the acronymist. Wave your hand, sir. He's the acronymist, you know, and he's writing a book now and should be out soon. Come up, be out soon, right? All the acronyms. He's the one to come up with the acronym LOVE, L-O-V-E, letting one vision exist. Yeah, hope, H-O-P-E, heavenly, overflowing, promises, expected. All that kind of stuff. He came by the house. You know, he always got something to say. Come by the house. He said, Bishop, I was thinking about something the other day. I was thinking about something the other day. I said, what is it running? I'm acting like I ain't interested. What is it running? What is it this time? He said, you know, I was thinking about, um, I had it in my phone. I put it in my phone. When he, he wasn't looking, I went on and typed it in my phone. And, uh, bro, I put it right here in my phone, right here. I showed it. You know, he was just going out. You know, you just act. You don't want to give people too much credit. And so I was... I was acting like I wasn't interested. I was saying, yeah, you know, I got to get to the office right away. I, I, I was, what, you, what you talking about, Ronnie? He said, man, I was thinking about some bishop the other day, and he said, um, I was thinking how energy plus effort with the right attitude equals effectiveness. And I'm like, I'm like okay, man, all right. Doc, it's good to see you. Boy, as soon as he, as soon as he went out the door, I said, hold on, that's energy plus effort. <laughs> with the right attitude <laughs> equals effective because I'm going to wear it out across the country. First time it's going to be Ronnie Harris said. Next time I said it be I heard. And then the next time I said God revealed it to me that no, it threw him though. But anyways, energy <laughs> check this out because this is applicable to anything in your life. 
It's good stuff. Now, when his book comes out, everybody got to buy one, right? Watch this. Energy plus effort. It goes along with what I'm talking about, about not losing heart. Energy plus effort. Here's the part we lose. With the right attitude. Because some of y'all show up on the job, but you acted crazy. Some of y'all in here right now, but you ain't said amen since you've been here. Like you here in time out or something. No, you got to have the right attitude. Energy plus effort with the right attitude equals what? Effectiveness. Energy. So that's the not losing heart part. God doesn't want you to lose heart. He wants you to stay focused on the better that is coming. And even though the devil says you're not going to do this, you're not going to do that, you look the devil in the face and say, you're a lie. Because I know whatever God promised me, I can have. Look at somebody and say, if God said it, tell them that settles it. Come on, say it again. If God said it, that settles it. Because he is a God of his word. Look at somebody and say, he is. You got to say it like I said. Say it. He is a God of his word. Well, what do you see here? Jesus. Jesus. Uh, he is, uh, sees rather his earthly finish. The Bible said, and Jesus endured the cross because of the joy that was set before him. You got to know that something is better down the road, that there's some brighter days ahead. You ought to wake up every morning and say, things got to get better. I know that God is up to something. You ought to wake up with some expectation. So the Bible said that Jesus endured the cross because of the joy that was in front of him. Help me say something good is in front of me. Come on, shout better is in front of me. Shout more is in front of me. Tell somebody I'm about to make more money than I ever made in my life. Now watch this, when I got through preaching this, in the eight o'clock service, one of the members came to me, and I know she's already got a good job. And when she shook my hand, she said, I just wanted to touch you, because I believe this word was for me. She said, because I'm up for a $35,000 raise. I said, in the name of Jesus, I wish somebody in here could understand that whatever God has for you, He's already done it. Tell somebody whatever God has for you. He's already done it. So all you got to do is just lift your hands and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my promotion. Thank you for my healing. Thank you for my blessing. Thank you for my family. Thank you for a way out of no way. So what is God waiting on? Since it's already done, what is God waiting on? To show up and show out. What is God? Uh, what is God waiting on? I'm going to close right there. He's waiting on your faith. Because faith is the only thing that moves God. I said faith is the only thing that moves God. I wish the cameraman expected God to do something this time. Faith is the only thing that moves God. I wish you look up and say, Lord, I believe. Come on, say, Lord, I believe you are able. Go shake five people's hands and say, you ain't seen nothing yet. Woo! Tell them you ain't seen nothing yet. These are beginnings, but there is a finish. Remember Jesus. Jesus, I'm closing. I said I'm closing. Jesus, y'all got it confused. 
Jesus hanging on the cross. Oh Lord, oh Lord, Jesus hanging on the cross did not say, I am finished. That's what you got to understand. Jesus on the cross did not say, I am finished. He said, it is finished. Look at somebody and said, don't let your trouble take you out. Take out your trouble. Come on, tell your neighbor, don't let your trouble take you out. Take out your trouble. Ask me why. Because I got a future and I want to be here for it. Tell somebody, I got a blessing that's already got my name on it. And I'm going to hold on. 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 Tell somebody, hold. I'm sorry. I'm finished. I'm finished. Stand with me. Stand with me. I got my bicycle. Come on, shake somebody's head. Tell them, hold on. Hold on. Don't dare give up. Hold on. Weeping. Weeping. May endure for night. But that's why Jesus said, go and kill me on the cross. He endured the cross because of the joy that was set before him. Go through these little beginnings because they're walking you to your finish. No, no, no. <laughs> I know you see me now. But it ain't over yet. <laughs> oh yeah, God ain't through. Blessed you. If your haters are upset about what you got right now, they might as well take some Tylenol because it ain't over yet. Look at somebody say some other stuff about to happen. Come on, tell them some more rain about to fall. If you know that God still got some more stuff for you, jump up and shout hallelujah. Come on and praise him. Woo! My God, my God. Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to finish this at North Memphis. Amen. What uh, Superintendent Caleb, listen, I want to challenge you. Not only those of you here, but even those of you watching online, to give it to God. Turn it over to him. Let him fix it for you. He knows just what to do with it. Don't throw your family away. Give them over to Christ. Amen. Take your burdens, they told me when I was a boy, to the Lord and leave them there. Thank you, Jesus. Some of y'all, the reason you've been all over, you've been carrying something that's too heavy. Give it to him. I want you to just to act it out today. I, don't, I, wanna, I would love to lay hands and pray for everybody in here. You know, I'm, I'll do that kind of stuff. But I want you to know God's hand's bigger than mine. He can, he can touch you right where you are. And he knows where you're hurting. Amen, somebody. So when I challenge you and tell you whatever it is, I want you to act like you're carrying something, whatever that situation, whatever it is. You don't have to tell everybody your business. Remember, Lord, you know. Amen. Get that situation. Some of y'all just got a name on it. Yeah, it's not a thing. For some of you, it's a person. Some of you, it's a situation. Get it right now. Ah, shade, glory. And I want you to know that God's hand is extended. When I tell you, I just want you to toss it like that and say, Lord, it's yours. 
One, two, three, do it. Lord, it's yours. Now I want you to praise it because you ought to feel lighter now. 